So I've been cooking my way through Marcella Hazan's legendary book, The Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking, and doing this without much skill, but lots of enthusiasm in the hopes of becoming better in the kitchen. And you know, even though these recipes were written like 30 to 50 years ago, they still feel quite fresh and modern. Not the ones we're making today though. We are traveling back to the 1970s and making hard boiled eggs with green sauce and salmon foam. So for salmon foam, we're using canned salmon. And on this, Marcella says, long before the Norwegians raised salmon in farms and made it commonplace in Italian markets, salmon was better known to Italians in its tinned form. Italian cooks produce excellent things with tinned salmon, of which the recipe given here is one of the best examples. Now I'm a little skeptical that we're gonna be able to transform this into something excellent, but let's get started. First, we drain the salmon. Ah, things are smelling fishy already. Now we need to look over it and see if we can pick out any bits of skin. Oh, there's a lot of it. And uh, any bones. Mm. It feels like I'm playing with cat food. Mm. Oh shit, there are bones. There's lots of bones. Oh, okay, that's gonna be very hard to do. Man, I thought this would just be like canned tuna. It's just, it's just meat. Oh geez, there's a bit of spine. There's heaps of these tiny bones. Can you just eat those? Yeah, that just crumbles up in your mouth. Well, that's an impossible task to get all the bones out. We're gonna be squishing this up, so I think we're gonna be fine. Now, we use a fork to crumble it all up. I'm just gonna be extra crumbly to get all those bones broken up in there. Okay, well, I think that has been thoroughly crumbled. Now, we add four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Evu. You're probably gonna be able to really taste the olive oil, so I went out and got some proper Italian stuff. Now, we need two tablespoons of lemon juice. By the way, chuck me a subscribe, and if we get enough of an audience, maybe I'll go out and buy an actual lemon squeezer. Ha oh, ha, that was exact. Now we add a little salt, a few grinds of pepper, and now we beat until it forms a smooth, homogenous mixture. Bones, what bones? All that seemed pretty normal so far, but here's where it gets strange. We're gonna be whipping up cream. So we need 350 milliliters, and we're looking for it to go stiff. Okay, I would call that stiff. Now we gently fold it into the salmon mixture. Oh, damn. So now that that's all blended, we're gonna cover that and put it in the fridge. And this is where I realized I don't own cling film, so we're using our foil. So on hard boiled eggs with green sauce, Marcella says, it's a savory, attractive way to serve hard boiled eggs whose yolks after cooking are blended with a piquant, 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 piquant. Piquant means having a pleasantly sharp taste or appetizing flavor. Appetizing, appetizing, piquant green sauce. So first we're gonna pop six eggs into cold water and bring it to the boil for 10 minutes. Now we'll drain these into the messy sink. Now she wants us to cool the eggs down by just leaving them aside, but I'm on a time limit. So we are going to make an ice bath and set aside. Now while those are chilling away, we're gonna make our egg filling. A quarter teaspoon of Dijon mustard. A quarter teaspoon of garlic. This garlic's not opening. Ugh. And of course, even though we're making a paste, we know that Marcella absolutely forbids a garlic press. The sodden pulp it produces has an acrid flavor and cannot even be sauteed properly. Of course, the funny thing with that is we're not even sauteing this, it's going in raw. So I'm convinced at this point that this is just some sort of Italian rite of passage. A quarter teaspoon of chopped garlic. One tablespoon of chopped parsley. Two tablespoons of the new fancy olive oil. Now next we need half a tablespoon of chopped capers. Now this is one of the times that Marcella gets a bit opinionated. She says we shouldn't use the ones in vinegar because the vinegar alters their flavor, making it sharper than it needs to be. In Italy, particularly in the South, capers are packed in salt and they taste better. Their disadvantage is that before they can be used, they must be soaked in water for 10 to 15 minutes, otherwise they'll be too salty. So I've never had salted capers before, but the deli at the markets had them and they were imported from Italy as well. That's authenticity. So I've had some soaking on the side for 15 minutes or so, just got to drain them. Oh, oh, that was overly dramatic. Still salty, but quite a bit more flavor than just the standard pickled ones. 
and we add half a tablespoon. Now we add three flat anchovy fillets. Now Marcella's pretty insistent that if you can find whole anchovies in salt, you should fillet them yourself. So I went looking, but it seems my only option is a one kilo tin that costs a bit over $100. She said if you can't find them, you should at least go for some plump fillets. And these were looking much bigger than the standard stuff you find in the jars. Oh, okay, that is gorgeous. It's like a little sardine. That is nothing like the anchovies I've had before. I'm glad I bought extras. Anyway, three anchovy fillets, and these are very finely chopped. And a tiny pinch of salt. And we'll drain our cooled eggs, and the next step should be quite appealing. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad joke. It was a little shellfish of me. Okay, so we're carefully cutting the eggs lengthways. How am I supposed to fill it when the yolk gets all the way down there? So now we carefully scrape out the yolks and add them to our mixture. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, mate. Look, it's not a perfect job, but I'm just, I'm worried about breaking these whites. Uh, you know what I think it is? I think the yolks are too big. These were two healthy chickens, two fertile chickens. This is what you get for buying the low hectare free range. Oh, come on. Well, it's not the cleanest job. This is the attempted cook after all. Now we mash all the ingredients with a fork. And we're gonna spoon the mixture back in. Ah, uh, ah, oh, uh, okay. You know what? We can have some casualties. Now we take a capsicum, or red bell pepper, and we are gonna chop this up. She says not too finely. I think we've probably found a happy middle. And then we sprinkle over the top. And that is our hard boiled eggs with green sauce. So how about that salmon foam? So we're serving it up on leaves of radicchio, which was surprisingly hard to find. I don't think I've ever had this before. I think it's a type of cabbage. So we're gonna carefully pull off some leaves, trying to keep them intact. I think the little ones look cute, we'll use those. Okay, that's our salmon foam after two hours in the fridge. We cycle your alfoil and we spoon a serving into the leaf. And we get a slice of lemon, cut it in half, and we place that on the top. And lastly, a mild black olive. Seems a shame to have only one, but that is our salmon foam. <laughs> it's 70s entree night. Appetizers for the Americans. And in keeping with the 70s theme, a glass of Cardinet. Okay. Have you ever had salmon foam before? No. Me neither. Remember that scene from Monty Python? The salmon mousse. They all die from salmon mousse. So let's tuck oh, in. No, no. Well, that's cast rather a gloom over the evening, hasn't it? This would have been the kind of thing that my grandma would have yeah. pushed it out of once. That is nowhere near as fishy as I was expecting. Yeah. yeah. No, that's actually not bad. It's kind of refreshing. I was nervous at first. Mm. I was half expecting this to be a little bit like cat food. It's mm. actually like pretty nice. It's literally just like a light fluffy fish cake. Yeah, I can see that. It's like an airy summer fish cake. Are the lemons strictly garnish? I'm just gonna squeeze it on. Yeah, it's not bad with the lemon. It makes it a bit more seafoody. I mm. quite like it with the lemon. I'm gonna have some with some olive. Oh, I think the olive takes it to the next level though. If you chopped up a little bit of olive and sprinkled it all over the top and you get those little salt bursts, I think that would be a good move. Yeah. Let's try these eggs. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, that was so many things at once. You start off with the mild tasting egg and that gives a gorgeous texture. Then you get a hit of caper, then suddenly anchovies, and then that olive oil is in there as well. And then you finish off with a really nice fresh crunch, which just brightens the whole thing up. It was just like bam, 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 bam. I'm loving that. I don't think I like that one. Having the mixture between anchovies, which I don't like, and then raw capsicum, which I do like, made my brain just go like, what is going on? Absolutely not. This is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I love parsley. <laughs> Why does my parsley? Parsley and egg taste like fish. I love this. It's like a little adventure in your mouth. You being brave and trying another one? Ah. I feel like it's a no. Salmon mousse, surprisingly. Mm. I like it. I was so nervous about the salmon mousse. It's it's the chill one. Would you say canned fish has been elevated? Elevated into a fluffy cloud. Elevated into a fluffy cloud. Well, I think that's a good spot to sign off on. Thanks again for joining.